Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Finally Functional. If you're new here, I'm making motorized shoes that you would wear when you play a VR game. The shoes keep you in the same spot as you walk around as much as you want in the game. It's been a couple months since my last video and a lot has happened since then. I'm going to go over all of it and then at the end of this video I'm going to have another demo. I'm going to use the VR shoes to walk around in No Man's Sky a little bit. So watch till the end for that. In the last video, I shared a bunch of improvements I made to my omnidirectional VR shoes, and I went to test them out, and they did not work as well as I expected. Uh, the skidding problems that I was having in the previous designs, they were worse with this design. I tested the VR shoes out by leaning left and right, and not leaning at all, to see if there would be skidding problems, and there were a lot. The shoes would skid, if I leaned a particular direction, and the motion was not smooth at all. In this clip, you can see that the wheels are spinning, but they're not catching the floor, they're not moving me back. And then I lean a certain way, and it works. It moves me back, and it's all good. And I can get it to move me back a few different times. But then, it starts having problems again. So as you can imagine, I was pretty frustrated at the time. Here I am from two months ago explaining what I think went wrong. So as you saw, this design did not work as I expected. If I leaned over on this side, then these wheels on this side, uh, the forward and back ones, they worked fine, but the other side did not. Same if I leaned over the other way. It seemed like that problem of skidding just got worse with this design. I thought it would get better because now the rows of wheels, this row of wheels, this row of wheels are closer together, but it just got worse. It seems like uneven flooring um, that also made it worse, and this design doesn't handle that as well as the previous one. Maybe if you, as you like, lean over here on this side, maybe it slightly lifts this side up or, or pulls it up or something like that. Like this, and maybe the same with the other side, and that causes traction problems. But yeah, uh, I'm disappointed. I thought this would go better. I have some ideas on how I can solve these problems. Maybe if I make it so that the wheels can flex a little, little bit, so um, like this whole thing can flex up and down a little bit, so if the surface is uneven, then it doesn't matter as much. Some wheels can be pushed up a little bit more in, into the platform. Some won't be pushed up. Um, they can all be at different levels to handle uneven surfaces. Another idea is to completely redo the layout um, to something more like this, where, see here, where all the forward and back wheels are on this side, and all the sideways wheels are on this side. Well, maybe if I zigzag them like this, or have forward wheels and sideways wheels on each side, then it doesn't matter which way you lean. Um, so I got those ideas, I got a few other ones, but I'm gonna have to think about it more. So I took a couple weeks to consider my options, and I came up with three of them. One, I could keep going with the omnidirectional shoes. I could keep trying to figure out the problems and fix them. Two, I could make a simpler VR shoe, one that I know that I can get working. And three, I can try this new VR shoe concept that I thought of during that two weeks. Okay, so here's the idea. I call it a passive VR shoe. This is just a little mock-up I made, but imagine it's a full-length shoe. Imagine you're walking with the shoe and you bring your foot down, and when your foot comes down, you press onto this plunger, or it could be a big platform, whatever, but it could be a plung plunger like this, and when you push down, it spins the wheels, and that brings you back. And then on the next stride, this plunger will be back up again. You put your foot down, and it spins, and it brings your foot back. So essentially, with each step, you're using your own body weight to power the shoe, to bring your foot back with each, with, with each step. So you don't need a big powerful motor that can move a person, or you don't need a bunch of motors that could move a person. Meaning that I think this could be a very, very cheap VR shoe to make. I call it a passive VR shoe. So those are my three options that I came up with, and after thinking about it for a long time, I decided I was gonna go with the option that I was most confident would work, which is not the omnidirectional option, because I could spend maybe another year working on the omnidirectional shoes, and they might still have problems. The passive VR shoe design is really interesting, 
but it's a brand new concept and it could have problems. So I decided I was gonna make a simpler VR shoe design, a motorized design that just goes forward and back. And I'll come back to the omnidirectional and passive concepts later. I figured I could get a simplified design working in just a couple months and actually be using them in a game and having fun. And then after that, I can spend as much time as I want trying to get more complicated designs to work. And so here are the new shoes. So I'll show you how they work. They go forward and back and the motor is back here. Turn the motor and all the wheels turn. The gear train going along the whole length. And here is the speed controller and anti-spark switch. Over here is the battery and the microcontroller. And then the binding is on the top, same as the other shoe. The shoe stays on the ground, binding comes up and it rolls on the wheels like so. Something you may have noticed is that the binding is kind of funky shaped. The binding looked like this before where it was just a long straight rectangle and now I made it kind of funky shaped. The reason I did that is with this design, it was harder to maintain my balance. Say my foot is in here and my foot's on the old binding. If I lean left and right, then my foot's hanging over the edge of the binding a little bit. And if I lean left and right, my foot's hanging over the edge. I can feel that and it makes me feel unstable. So I just basically made the binding wider in certain spots so that that wouldn't happen. And I actually, when I use these things, feel more stable because of that. One feature that I added to this shoe that wasn't in the previous shoe is a length adjustment. So see how this shoe, it's the perfect length for my foot, but what about my wife's foot? So here's her shoe. The shoe's a bit long. Well, I made it so that this whole front part can come off. And I did that with the other shoe here. So see how it's much shorter. That whole front part, this whole part, can just be taken off by taking a couple screws out. And now it's a much better, uh, much better length for my wife's foot. So I'll put those side by side so you can see them better. But this is what they look like and it's really easy to modify the length of this shoe. Okay, and now I'm gonna put my shoe back on. So yes, these shoes are not omnidirectional. They only go forward and back, but they're much simpler to put together and design and they're much cheaper. Each of these shoes only uses one motor and one speed control. The omnidirectional shoes needed two per shoe. And all of the wheels on these shoes, every one of them, I 3D printed and the material cost for all of these wheels was under $10. Consider that with how each of these Omni wheels are $10. Each one of these are $10 and I made all of these wheels for $10. This is a lot cheaper. And like I said before, I'm going to get back to the omnidirectional and passive design, but for now, I'm gonna focus on these. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys a demo. I'm gonna walk in No Man's Sky. I'm gonna show maybe about three minutes of that demo because this video is getting a bit long. And then the full length demo, I will upload as a separate video at the same time I upload this video. So as always, like and subscribe, it helps the channel out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I realized I forgot a few things. So while the demo's starting, I made it easier to get in and out of the safety setup. The harness can be put on wherever you want, like I'm doing here, and then hooked on after the fact. And it's way easier to put the headset on when it's just hanging up there and grab the controllers when they're hanging right there, ready to go. And pay attention to the demo because I made some algorithm tweaks and I made the motion smoother. So pay attention and it should look smoother to you. Okay, see you guys later. Here we go. Oh, here's my planet. There's my ship. I have another ship, that's a starter ship. I have a really small base. I'm not that far into the game. Here's my little house. Hello, hello. Uh, let's go 
this way. Jump over that. Jump over that. Here's a cave. Thank you. 